بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وبعد continuing with سوره المطففين uh, in the previous session we uh, spoke about the set of verses that addressed the issue of mutaffifin those who uh, give less than due uh, when it's their turn to give and they expect to get in full or more when it's their turn to receive uh, following that Allah Azza wa Jal uh, starts talking about two different uh, types of people uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the uh, first verse كَلَّا إِنَّ كِتَابَ الْفُجَّارِ لَفِي سِجِّينَ كَلَّا is a word used in Arabic to negate anything that uh, was addressed before it uh, so Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is negating that there will be no resurrection. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, No, indeed, the record, no is kalla, indeed, the record of the wicked is in Sijin. So Allah Azza wa Jal is negating that there will be no resurrection. Which was the last thing we spoke about uh, in the previous uh, session. Right? So, uh, this was the, the uh, claim uh, or the denial of the Quraysh uh, that there will be no uh, resurrection, there will be no accountab accountability, there will be no day of judgment, right? So Allah is negating that, saying, Kalla, no. Indeed, the book of the wicked is in Sijin. The wicked, Allah Azza wa Jal, in the beginning of the surah, called them mutaffifin, and in this sect of verses Allah calls them uh, the fujjar because they are wicked with Allah Azza wa by denying his divinity they don't deny his lordship they say Allah is the creator and the sustainer but when it comes to worshiping only Allah the Quraysh used to deny that so they are wicked with Allah Azza wa as well as wickedness with people in the terms of not giving giving uh, people their due, right? Uh, and as if you recollect, we said that this was something that was widespread uh, in Mecca as well as in uh, Medina. So these wicked uh, or this wickedness includes the disbelievers as well as the hypocrites as well as sinful Muslims. Right? Kalla inna kitab al fujari lafi sijin. The uh, record of the wicked is in sijin. Sijin was interpreted by different uh, scholars to have different meanings. Some said it is the uh, seventh earth, which is the lowest earth. Some said it's a, it's a prison. Taken that from the root sajana, seen jim noon is the root uh, where this is extracted from, and some said it is tightness and loss and humility. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in a narration something that will bring the picture closer uh, to to our minds in the narration of Al Bara radiAllahu anhu, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al Bani. It's a long narration in which the Prophet ﷺ uh, explained in details uh, the process of taking the soul out and what happens to the soul after its departure from the body, right? And he spoke about two types of people because there is no, no third. You're either a pious believer or a disbeliever or a sinner. One of the two, right? So one type will have one way of dealing with the soul and the other will have another way of dealing with the soul. In this, in this segment or, or part of the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, uh, spoke about or explained what happens to the wicked soul, right? Uh, so we understand the angel of death will come and he will be accompanied by either angels of mercy for the pious believers 
or angels of punishment for the wicked, wicked being either a, a disbeliever or a sinful. So when he takes the soul out, the soul is taken by either one of the two, either the angels of mercy or angels of punishment. We ask Allah's mercy. And then they, as the Prophet said, and then they ascend up with it, with the soul. He said, Whenever they pass by a group of angels in each one of the, uh, in the uh, heavens, the seven heavens, but in the beginning, up until they reach the first level, they, whenever they pass by a group of, uh, of angels, they would say about the wicked, who is this evil soul? It is recognized as evil because first of all, it's accompanied by or taken by the angels of punishment, right? So they say it is so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, and they will give him the worst name. And then they seek permission to ascend to the next layer or the next heaven, the higher heaven, but permission will not be granted. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Uktubu kitabahu fi sijin fil ardi sufla." Write his record in sijin in the lowest part of earth. Iyadam billah. Then his soul will be thrown from the heavens back to his soul. So, sijin is a tight, miserable place in the seventh layer of earth that is or the nature of which is a prison it's like allah Azza wa Jal is saying to the disbelievers no the matter is not like you claim that you will not be resurrected resurrection is going to take place and the deeds of the wicked whether they are disbelievers or sinful those who disbelieved and where mutaffifin, they were give, given less than what was due, is recorded. And their deeds are enumerated. And this record of evil is going to be in the lowest part of earth. So take heed. And it's addressing the believers, saying, stop your heedlessness. Because you can be included in these wicked group or category and you will be resurrected and held accountable for what you do. And then Allah goes on to say, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا سِجِّينَ And what can make you know what sijin is? So as we mentioned before, these repetitions are to reflect the importance and significance of the matter being repeated and how great it is so people can understand. So Allah Azza wa is telling them, your perception cannot reach to know what sijin is. And then Allah Azza wa Jal confirms saying, Kitabun Marqum. Meaning, it is a register inscribed. So this book is, uh, was written and it enumerated all your deeds. And it is placed in the lowest part of earth, the seventh earth, called Sijin. And it is preserved. And it is precise. No addition, no deletion, nothing other than the fact. Nothing other than reality. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَقَالُوا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا They would say, what is wrong with this book? It did not leave out anything minor or major, small or large, except that it enumerated or listed. And they found or they will find what they did present. And Allah does not wrong. Anyone. Your Lord does not wrong. Allah says, Allah does not wrong people anything. 
Rather, people are the ones who wrong their own selves. And the worst type of oppression anyone can do is against his own self when he does not maintain it upon the path of Allah Woo, that day, wail, that day to the deniers. So this wail is going to be for those who denied the day of resurrection. And it is going to be also, it is also a warning for us believers, those amongst us who persist on sinning. الَّذِينَ يُكَذِّبُونَ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينِ So, who, that day to the deniers, who deny the day of recompense. One thing very important here to point out, we've mentioned before that gratitude is something. The essence of gratitude is that it is when it is done practically. Well, denial also has two forms. Either the form which the Quraysh used to do, denying with their tongues, verbally, or denial in a state of behavior, physically. See, when a believer persists on sinning, he is practically, or as if he is practically denying that he is going to die, res be resurrected and held accountable because otherwise he would not persist. A person who is heedful of the day of judgment, the person who is heedful of resurrection and accountability will not persist. Yes, he might sin because he's human. And he's fallible. But he would not persist and continue on. And none deny it, meaning resurrection, except every transgressor sinful. Transgressor. He transgressed by transgressing the limits and the boundaries set by Allah Azza wa Jal and committing the prohibitions. And a theme, sinful, is actually in this form reflecting the persistence and abundance of sinning. It is talking about someone who's possessed by his own desires, who is controlled by his desires, and he gives in and therefore sins whenever the desire calls for it. And following desires lead to sin. Transgressing the limits of Allah Azza wa Jal coupled with this can lead the person to deny practically and eventually verbally denying resurrection and accountability. And then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions their lack of manners with the Quran, the Quraysh. إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ When our verses are recited to him, the one who denies resurrection, he says, these are legends of former people. Subhanallah. When someone is immersed in sin and desires, he would utter things that are purely disbelief if he's a believer. You hear sometimes some Muslims say words that you would not believe can ever be uttered by a Muslim. But this is the consequence of Persistence on sin. This is the consequence. This is the outcome of submitting and giving in 
to desires and following them. The one who is like that, it's very difficult for them to be affected by advice and admonition. You, you advise them, remind them with the hereafter and all that. I was talking to one person once, you know, reminding him with uh, the hereafter and Jannah and Nara. And after talking for maybe 10, 15 minutes, he said, okay, so now, okay, what do you mean so now? It's like, okay, ignore this. Let's talk about, you feel that the heart is, the reception of the heart is not there. It's not reception at all. And this is what Allah says. Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun. No. Rather, the stain has covered their hearts of what? Of that which they were earning, meaning their sins. Kalla. Again, it's a negation. It negates their claim that the Quran is. Uh, legends, as they said, uh, in Allah told us, they said in the verse before this one. Rather, it is, Allah is telling them, rather, it is revelation, it is divine revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal. But their hearts were sealed, they were covered. Ran is like a cover of steam, right? Of rust. Because of their denial and stubbornness and therefore they were deprived from recognizing the truth uh, the prophet وسلم, and this is a narration reported by ahmed and tirmidhi and classified as sound by al-albani abu Huraira said that the messenger وسلم, said describing the state of a slave when he persists on sinning what results from that what impact does this have on his heart or her heart he said uh, when the slave commits a sin a black dot is placed on his heart if he stops refrains and asks forgiveness and repent repents then it will be cleansed but if he increased, if he persists, then more dots will be placed on his heart until his entire heart will be covered. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is the cover, the Ran, right? Which is mentioned in this verse. He said, Allah. He said, This Cover is what Allah Azza wa is referring to in the verse. So we need to be careful. We need to be careful not to persist. We are not asked to be angels because we're not. We're simply human. So we're fallible. So we're not asked to be infallible. We are asked to refrain, to repent, to ask forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. Yes, we will weaken again and commit other sins, of course, because we're humans. But we are commanded and instructed not to persist and continue as if we will never be meeting Allah Azza wa Because the result of that is that the, the heart will be covered like rust covers iron. And then no admonition will benefit our heart no advice will. you'll hear the quran or someone like that will hear the quran it's as if he is reading a newspaper or a magazine or listening to music it's not of any effect effect on his heart none whatsoever not like allah azza wa jal says law anzalna hadha al quran ala jabal la ra'aytahu khashia if we were to send this Qur'an down upon a mountain, you will see it humble, mutasaddi'a, cracking. Min khashyatillah. Out of fear from Allah. But the heart 
on the other hand, that has this cover, will never be affected. So we need to be careful. No, indeed, from their Lord that day they will be partitioned. They will not be able to see Allah Azza wa Jal as a result of their denial and stubbornness. Just like they were blocked from the truth in this dunya, they blocked themselves from accepting the signs and verses of Allah Azza wa Jal. They will be punished accordingly by being blocked and partitioned from seeing Allah Azza wa Jal. And being partitioned or blocked from and prevented from seeing Allah Azza wa Jal implies the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal and the severe punishment awaiting such people. And so we don't think that this is only addressing the disbelievers. Some believers will be deprived from seeing Allah Azza wa Jal. Ayyadan Billah. This is reported by Muslim and narrated by Abu Hurairah as an example of some types of people who will be deprived from seeing Allah. The Prophet said, there are three types of people whom Allah Azza wa Jal will not speak to on the Day of Judgment and will not look at them and will not purify them and will have a painful punishment. And then he mentioned a, an old person who commits zina, a ruler, a king who lies, and a poor person who is arrogant. We ask Allah not to deprive us. Just like the best reward when we mentioned, when we were explaining Surah Hamma, we mentioned that the best reward the believers will enjoy in Jannah is seeing Allah Azza wa Jal. So just like this is the highest type of reward, then the opposite is the worst type of punishment, being deprived from seeing Allah Azza wa Jal is something very, very painful and severe. Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullah said this uh, verse, along with the verses of Surah Al-Qiyamah, are clear evidence that Allah Azza wa Jal will be seen on the Day of Judgment. This verse and the verses of Surah Al-Qiyamah on that day, faces will be bright to their Lord, they will be looking. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal from His favor. ثُمَّ إِنَّهُمْ لَصَالُ الْجَحِيمِ Then indeed they will enter and burn in hellfire. In addition to them being deprived from seeing Allah Azza wa on top of that they will be physically punished by being burnt 
in the fire of hell. ثم يقال هذا الذي كنتم به تكذبون. Then it will be said to them, this is what you used to deny. Subhanallah. Ibn al-Jawzi said, the keepers of fire will be telling them that. Subhanallah. Look what Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared for them as punishment. Three types of punishment. Number one, they will be deprived from and blocked from seeing Allah Azza wa Jal. Number two, they will physically be punished by burning in the fire of hell. For the disbelievers, it's eternal. And for the believers, it is until they're purified from their sins. But one dip, as the Prophet ﷺ said, one dip in the fire of hell is enough to make one forget any pleasure he's ever enjoyed. So how would the case be for those who be thrown in fire to be purified? We ask Allah's protection. So the second type is the physical punishment. And the third type is this rebucking form of speech they will be speak, uh, spoken to with by the keepers of, uh, of hell. These verses, brothers and sisters, are a clear warning to us not to give in to our desires as believers. We have to take lessons from what we read in the Quran. We have to understand and live and act accordingly. We have to always remind ourselves that, yes, I sinned, so let me, turn, let me return to Allah. Let me repent, let me ask His forgiveness. Because continuing otherwise, will result in the cover and that rust of the heart which will block us from recognizing the truth. As a matter of fact, at the end of this narration I just cited to you, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said in one of the, the, the versions of the narration, until the person will become in a state where he will not recognize truth or falsehood or will recognize falsehood as truth and truth is falsehood. So we have to be careful. We ask Allah's protection from this state. Allahumma ameen wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanakallahumma alhamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilik.